Hello everyone, this is Jan Monahan for Wrapping with Jan. This is the Hero Arts Monthly Kit for September 2019. And being so close to Halloween, I thought this was going to be full of uh, ghosts and goblins and speak spooky houses and all that stuff. And I took a look at it and I couldn't believe it. It looked more like a library. I thought a library is not spooky. But um, anyway, this looks like a card catalog. And um, let's pull it out here and see if I can show it to you. It has one of those, um, I'm not sure what they call it, the little peekaboo dies. And, um, but as far as a card catalog goes, let me show you. It's, it's got all kinds of uh, different openings for drawers and keys and the uh, identification squares in there. Um, what else does it have? We've got, yeah, we, we have some scary stuff in here. We've got spiders and spider webs and skulls and, and uh, all kinds of interesting things. And let's take a look at the, um, the die for this. Um, oh, this is, yeah, this is creepy. I know who this is going to, the little boy next door. This young man is crazy about insects. His father nicknamed him Roach Bugman, um, and that's what he calls them quite frequently. <laughs> so I'll give that to him. Uh, the other side is just a curio cabinet, um, not particularly spooky. Lots of little knickknacks. Here is the peekaboo die that I was speaking of, and it only when you run it through your uh, die cutting machine it only cuts about two-thirds of uh, the opening and then it embosses the other part the other portion so that you can open it without tearing it off tearing off the portion that it embossed okay now comes my favorite part I'll take a look at the goodie bag um, I was looking online prior to the release of this and um, oh we got some paint and um, it's bronze I'm not sure where we're going to use that I'm, I'm going to try uh, but as I was saying I was looking at the papers and these are very very interesting papers they've got um, lots of texture and most of them are um, they're they're wood grain textures and let's see yeah okay here's my favorite um it's the the black and kind of a gray and um, it looks like the side of a tree and it's also got some green that has this very similar texture um but it's not quite as as uh, visible and there's that bronze okay well they want us to use the bronze with the paint oh well we'll see what we can do now there's something in this kit that I overlooked uh, and we'll see it later on in this video but it's a, a little uh, bag of knickknacks. It's got keys and it's got insects and all kinds of good stuff so I'll use those. Alright, let's get started on project number one. I'm taking the die from the kit and I'm tracing around <clears throat> excuse me, the outside of this um, card catalog. And, you know, I, I call it a card catalog. I was a librarian for 20 years. And that's all, for when I first started in library school, um, this was the only thing we had was the card catalog. And now, it's, of course, it's all online. All right, I've traced around the, um, the die. And now it's time to give this uh, card catalog some color. I'm going to be blending antique linen, walnut stain, and vintage photo all on the front of this card. And I'm going to try and make it like the um, original card catalogs look like, kind of a, oh, I don't know, a light brown, a beige, a bone color. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to um, put this in fast motion because I know that it's boring to watch somebody blend colors and 
I'm using two different kinds of blending tools here. I'm using the original, the one with the little short stump, and the, um, the felt base. And what I'm using now is the life-changing blending brush from the picket fence people. And um, the, the jury's still out on which I like better. Both of them do a great job. I plan to emboss this, so I want to make sure that uh, no ink is still wet, and I'll test it here. The um, embossing powder I'm using is interesting in that it looks a little bit like um, if any of you baby boomers ran track or were any kind of athlete, there was the uh, cinder tracks. And I hope you can see this. It's Rocky Road Baked Texture from The Altered Page. And um, The Altered Page is a, is a company that does little, a little different stuff. But anyway, yes, the, um, the embossing powder looks like a cinder track. And uh, if you've run on a cinder track, it's like running on gravel. And that's kind of what this looks like and, and feels like. So I want to make sure that um, nothing's going to stick except where I want it to stick. So it, it's all dry. I'm going to go ahead and return this um, <coughs> gra cinder gravel <laughs> embossing powder to its container. Um, I have a funny feeling that would stain my carpet. But anyway, let's move along here and um, go ahead. I'm going to use my Misty on this and I'll also be once again making sure that there's nothing that's going to stick uh, where it doesn't belong and I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool for that and this is a must for any of you who are rubber stampers this is a must when you're using embossing powder um, it just cuts down on it like the like the name says it cuts down on the static and um, I'm going to go ahead and use a very sticky ink and it's it's called Versamark and it stays sticky for a long time so there's no need to race through what you're doing um, and I'm doing a pretty good job putting this down there we go this is one place where this tool this misty um, it was only introduced a couple of years ago but it has changed the face of rubber stamping dramatically um, you, we no longer have to guess if uh, if we're getting right on top of the image or um, we don't have to try and look underneath a, a stamp to try and figure out if we're going to make a double image but anyway yes misty the misty has changed things all right enough of that let's take a look and see how well i did here Oh, well, I missed the top corner. Okay. Well, off camera, I went ahead and fixed that. Um, and now I am putting in the card catalog uh, identifiers. I think that's what we called them in library school. Uh, and we'll go ahead and stamp those. And I'm using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful ink. That and... Uh, Hero Arts. Both have a very good intense black ink. Now I'm going to go ahead and stamp this and then we'll move on. I wanted this uh, card to be a happy autumn card and I didn't want anything scary on there so I just put uh, the identifiers and keys and um, I think I've got a pumpkin and a heart on there. I went ahead and ran this through my Gemini Junior and 
we'll see here in a minute how they open up. I think some people will think, well, you did this upside down. And, I, well, no, I didn't. They may open upside down. The, those little drawers may open upside down to you, but the catalog drawers didn't um, open toward, you know, up towards the ceiling. They opened out. Okay, here we are, and I am using Hero Arts equivalent of glossy accents. I didn't want it to look completely dull and drab, so I'm putting just a little bit of shiny on the hearts and the keyholes, and I believe that's a gourd there. Adding just a little bit more interest. Okay, there we go. Now, what I'm doing right now may seem a little strange, but I put the, uh, the dye back in my Misty. And as I said, I, I wanted this to be a you know happy fall, and so I put all the verbiage that I could in there and closed the Misty door and picked those up and inked them up. And now I will have a matching image for every opening that there is on that die. That big thud you just heard was me knocking over my water glass. All right, back to the project at hand. Okay, I'm going to take this out, and then I'm going to, believe it or not, put the die on top of this so that I will be able to match up um, the images with the doors and I'm also going to use this as a guide because I intend to put a lot of color in this and as soon as we get this lined up we can get going on that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab my Copics here and uh, voila! I cut her, colored all that in and um, made sure that I didn't Go, you know, drew inside the box. I'm going to put these two together, and I'm using Gina K uh, Connect Adhesive, Connect Glue, I believe she calls it. Uh, this is a, I'm pretty impressed with this glue. Uh, it, so far, the um, the nozzle hasn't gotten uh, stuck, and um, it comes out, and it's it's it doesn't come out in globs. So um, if you get a chance to try this, it will be well worth, well worth your while. All right, now comes the uh, tricky part. I'm kind of flying blind on this. And I'm, if you see my head come into, the, into view, I'm trying to come right down on top of it and not uh, block out any of the, uh, the Copic drawings that I've done. And hold your breath here we go I've got two concerns here I not only want to make sure that these two pieces of cardstock stick together but I don't want the doors of the card catalog sticking and um, I'm just gonna check a few here and make sure it's okay alright now let's get this thing cut out and put on a, a card front. I'm using Tim Holtz um, scissors here and uh, they do have a Teflon coating in the off chance that uh, there's a little bit of glue that's squeezed out from under there. The most adhesive will come off of the scissors without much trouble. Um, and I I enjoy using them. I have arthritis and they, they just make it easier for me to cut. All right, we've got that. Now let's see if, um, yeah, the doors are opening here. Okay. Before I started uh, filming, I went ahead and used that uh, the black and gray uh, wood grain cardstock on this, 
and um, once again we're using the Gina K adhesive and uh, we'll quickly get this put on and our card will be finished. Another nice thing about Gina K's adhesive is it gives you the chance to move things around before it's it's set. Um, with uh, double-sided tape, you don't have that chance. Once it's down, it's down. Okay, after I added a few little gems, some keys and some bugs, we're on to project number two. Project number two, we're going to be making a gift bag. And for this project, you're going to need, and I'm using uh, that my favorite cardstock again. I'm going to put that on, and there's some orange um, cardstock, and then we've got a. Then they're getting progressively smaller, the white cardstock, and then we've got the Happy Halloween from the kit. Uh, the kit I'm using for. Uh, some addition to this is it's from Simon Says Stamp. It's um, it's a Hello Darling, and it's got lots of plants and things. And we're going to do something interesting with that after we get all of our um, all of our cardstock attached. And I sped this up so you don't have to watch me do things that <laughs> are boring. There we go. Okay. All right, the Happy Halloween, that's going to go on. And once again, I'm using the uh, Gina K Connect glue. And uh, for these uh, for these delicate letters and numbers and writing, uh, the Gina K has put a tip on there, and it won't uh, it won't glob. And you put once you put it down. Um, it's a it's a small amount, and you get it taken care of. So let's see if we can get this on the on the gift bag before it dries. Okay. There it goes. Now I must apologize in advance. Um, I've got it, this bag, even though it's a small gift bag, I can't get the whole thing in the screen without uh, showing you my uh, messy craft room. So I'll try to keep this on in the frame that I'm working on. So let's go to uh, the main event here. And as I said before, this is the Simon Says Stamp Hello Darling set. And there's there's flower pots and, and flowers and leaves and things like this. And I'm just going to use the pots and I'm going to use um, the, the stems. And the rest of it will come from the Hero Arts kit. All right, I've put these terracotta pots in my Misty, and uh, the closest ink I had to terracotta was fired brick, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and use that. That's from the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide ink, and it it works pretty well. I don't think anybody would argue with me, but... Um, all right, the next thing we're going to do is put in our, um, now yeah, there it is, <laughs> put on the stems and put them in the terracotta pots and then we will be on our way. I occasionally have trouble with these little pieces of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, little rubber stamps. My hands are warm and my fingers are fat and they're not really made for all these little uh, bits and pieces. But anyway, 
we managed to get it done. For the stems, I am using uh, Distress Oxide ink uh, called Old Paper. And I thought it was kind of a, oh, kind of a Halloween green. Uh, not, not a Kelly green and not like a forest green, but uh, I don't know. Just a, a nice green for Halloween. Once again, this is where the misty really shines. There's no way, like with the old block stamps, that anybody would be able to come down on top of this image again and not smear it or make it a double image or just ruin it all together. So thank goodness for the misty. Well, moving along here, I've decided to plant a couple of Halloween gardens. We are going to have a skull garden and we're going to have a spider web garden. Creating these projects is always fun. Um, I get a, uh, a creative and um, artistic flexibility. And of course, there's no spider web gardens or skull gardens, but that doesn't mean that we can't create one. I must commend Hero Arts. Um, their images are crisp and they're clear and you know exactly what you're looking at when you stamp them. Okay, we've got all of our... Oh, I'm sorry, that was the garbage man. He's today's garbage day. All right, once again, I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamp Intense Black Ink and giving these plants some personality here. And um, so let's take a look and see how well I did. My video is kind of choppy here. It started out as an hour and 20 minutes, and I think I've gotten it down to about 27 minutes, which is pretty good for me. I try to keep these as short as possible, but I want everybody to see the procedures that, that go on. All right, last time. Okay, now we've got it. All right, let's stick this on. Let's stick this. Let's um, adhere this to the front of our gift bag. I know I'm always preaching to my audience about how they should use a very uh, secure double-sided tape for the front of a gift bag because of all the different textures and folds and things. But right now I've got enough uh, cardstock lined up here that it's fairly flat and uh, it's I think that this will um, the this liquid adhesive will be just fine all right let's get this affixed to our the front of our gift bag and just a couple more things and we will be finished with project number two uh, I always put a gift tag on my bags so that uh, they can be, the gift tag can be removed and the whole bag can be reused again. And I'm just going to put something very simple on the gift, on the gift tag. Just going to put a spider's web to kind of pull the whole thing together. And I've got some white and orange and black raffia. This raffia uh, comes from the Bearwick Company, and they make just about every, they, they make all this raffia, and that's with a W and not an R. I used to use the raffia that started with an R, that was the, the natural raffia, but I ended up getting so many splinters and scrapes and little pieces of whatever that stuff is made of in my fingers, and so I finally had to go uh, go get the synthetic stuff. But uh, yeah, they've got every color in the rainbow on that particular ribbon. We're going to put the gift tag on now. Um, somebody asked me where I got my gift tags. I buy them by the thousands. Uh, you can get them online. You just have to look around to make sure that uh, you've got the the right size. And 
most companies will work with you. They'll they'll put that that little hole anywhere you need it and the size that you need it or whether you want it in craft or white or blue or green or what you want. Okay, last but not least, I'm finally found some orange gems that I can put on the front of this bag just to give it a little additional interest. And here I'm using one of my favorite tools. It's the uh, Jewel Picker. I think it's by Marvy. And like I said before, my fingers are fat and I cannot pick stuff up this little stuff up for the life of me and um, this has really been a lifesaver so if you've got fat fingers arthritis or you're just all thumbs this little tool here will help quite a bit I wanted to decorate this black widow and I live in the Ohio Valley and I don't see black widows except for in pictures or when I go out west um, and I can't remember that whether they've got an orange or a red hourglass on their abdomen, but today it's going to have to be orange. All right, I think we are finished, and it's time to move on to project number three. As we start project number three, um, I filmed this at about 1.30 in the morning, and I was tired, and there are a few clips here that are out of camera range but at the end of this video I'll show you I'll, I'll show you all the projects that we did but right now we're going to make a make a card and we're gonna start with I I ran out of my favorite uh, um, cardstock and I, I starting with the green this is still the wood grain but it's it's green it's not quite as vibrant and exciting as the other the black and gray wood grain but this will do for for now so it's just a uh, an a2 card and i'm going to affix this to the front the ghost you saw there in the beginning that is a simon says stamp uh, die and I'm I haven't checked the website but I'm sure being close to October that they've got that available I've got these three strips of paper and I'm going to show you how to make a banner out of a strip of paper without a banner die it's not tough it's probably the most uh, elementary way to do it but it's uh, as some people would say it's medieval but effective and we put a little dot there at the bottom and then we cut up one side till it, we, we meet the dot and then we cut up the other side till we meet the dot and voila we have a banner every now and then they might need a little shaping but for the most part this is this is the best way to do it. I've seen people do it with, yeah, banner dies, and I've seen them do it with rectangle dies, but if you don't have either one of those, this is the fastest way to get it done. Okay, I have stamped my banners with images from the kit and with our spooky colors, our orange and white and purple. And now it's time to put our card together. All right, all our banners are on. Now it's time to put our ghost. And we're just going to use some liquid adhesive. I've had this dye for quite a while. Last year for Halloween, I was working with my granddaughters and we were making cards for teachers and neighbors and things like that. And this this poor ghost ended up on just about everything and then when my grandson arrived they thought it would be fun to make a, a mobile of ghosts and <laughs> my daughter-in-law wouldn't let him put it up I guess she thought the baby would be scared but anyway okay let's put our happy Halloween on and 
then we will be finished. Halloween goes on here. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and sign up for my YouTube channel. I have, every Wednesday, I have a uh, washi tape Wednesday, and I always do something with washi tape. Um, yeah, this is 1 o'clock in the morning, and I, I wasn't sure, I wasn't watching my monitor is what happened. So sign up for my YouTube channel, and thank you so much for watching.